All right. <clears throat> Ready? Yer. Let's go. Check my eye Let's do the damn thing. We doing it. <coughs> oh shit. I was gonna start singing. We doing it and doing it and doing it well. Mm -hmm. The Lord came See? down and stopped me. <laughs> Welcome back to the Cool Comic <laughs> Show. Hi, hi, hi. I am your host, hi, hi. Damien. And as always, I'm joined by Galactic Mr. E, a.k.a. Mr. E, a.k.a. E. And I'm not going to lie to you, I did not pull up the name of this episode for Young Justice, which is... It is Forbidden Secrets of Civilization's Past. Nice. What episode number is this? 20? 20. Mm -hmm. Wow. 20 episodes. There's only six left. There's only six left. Yeah, so it's Young Justice Season 4, Episode 20. And as E said, Forbidden Secrets of Civilization's Past. As we mentioned last week, we are now at inv Invitation to Neil Biff. Biff. Well, I mean, we may not have gotten the full invitation yet, but, you know, someone sure did. A couple people <laughs> did. Um, I have a lot of notes about this episode, but I'm going to let you go mm. first and let me tell me what you thought about this one. Um... I enjoyed the episode. There was definitely a lot going on. Shout out to the to the Zod cult. But um, I, you know, I appreciated the episode. Um, we definitely got a lot more information. Kind of, um, we saw a little more debate between. Uh, the Justice League and the New Gods and Green Lantern. Um, it was cool to find out more about Tamar Ray and being the uh, Green Lantern for Krypton as well. Um, I kind of like how they threw that in there, um, especially with everything going on in the subplot. Yeah. Um, uh, my only, like, I, I, I definitely, definitely, definitely enjoyed this episode. My only caveat is I feel like Rocket is suffering from the same thing that yeah. Zatanna <laughs> suffered Zatanna. from and that she is just getting put, pushed to the background of her own arc. Mm -hmm. um, but besides that, I am thoroughly enjoying this arc. I still think last week was my favorite so far, but that's just me being biased. Shout out to all the, the Razor fans. <laughs> the, the Green People Lantern. loved it. Oh, it was so good. But this weekend, this weekend, this week's episode still capitalized on that. A um, lot of good information. A um, lot of fantastic news that Forager might be staying behind. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah. that's a win in my book. <laughs> so I enjoy this episode a lot as well. I feel the same way about Rocket. I think the first two episodes of this arc, I was like, okay, she's still pretty prominent. This one she definitely took a bit of a back seat to. Um, the main thing with this episode was there was a lot of stuff with the Lore Zod thing. Um, I think you have it listed down of... Let me pull this up real quick. So, yeah, with this episode, with Rocket, I think she, we only saw her, like, twice in this episode, I want to say, or something yeah, like that. it was not many at all. Yeah, it was uh, mainly Lore <laughs> Zod that kind of took over this whole thing um the portion of the arc yeah yeah so we got more of <laughs> peter metron though <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I, I mentioned i don't think i mentioned this before but i like um lorzad's design you know i know we mm -hmm. we found out that he was a character this is a different version of him um than mm -hmm. like what the comics had portrayed uh but i like his design we got him in a little bit more action where he like fucking <laughs> we get that scene where it cuts back to when razor punches metron through the boom tube and then super, or Superboy, Lorzod flies up and punches him midway through him getting punched <laughs> yeah, back. Yo, he was on point. He yeah. was ready for it, dog. So I, I like <laughs> I like uh, Lorzod's design, and he has that like what is what does the internet call it? Like the bisexual eye slit or whatever the eyebrow slit. Hello? Whatever. That's what the internet calls it. That's what I, I haven't seen the internet call it. I, um, I am not on a different internet than you. I don't, <laughs> so that, that's what they call it. I've never seen that. But yeah, I like his design. And uh, mm -hmm. we got to see, I wrote it down, the Kaiser Thrall, that little box that's not the mother box, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we got to see that. And we got to see the reason behind the Ruction Cell being tampered with, yeah. which they made a lot together. of sense. Because I, yeah. I remember in the episode, I was like, what, what's Malafog doing there? Like, why is he doing yeah. Um. So yeah, that was... Like them, when they were going into Metron's vault, I was like, Metron's got another here, right? Mm. And he had that like uh, that security system. And a baby sun eater. Yeah. And 
when they found when they finally like caught captured Metron and had him stuck there, he had a great mm-hmm. line. I wrote it down. He said, "What are the warnings of mortals to a new god?" Metron just showed him his fucking power. He's like, "Here's some kryptonite. Fuck you. I'm out of here." <laughs> Well, yeah, Metron played that real cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'll take you to the box, whatever, no, yeah, just let me out. Just let me out, dog. <laughs> and I thought I, was, I didn't think about this until after I watched it, because he leaves, right, and he run, he boom tubes to the summit, which, mm. something I love about Young Justice, and I don't know if they were doing this in the first two seasons, but I know they definitely started it last season, the boom tubes, like, they feel fucking heavy, like, they feel, like, you get, you're like, what the fuck, like, when it comes into <laughs> yeah. a room. So he mm. boom tubes back to the summit and like takes over that whole room and he's like, Come with me if you want to fucking save this galaxy. And yeah. Something I had to think about until after I was like, Oh, he left because he knew they can just go back in time. Like if he tried mm. to sit there and fight with them, he they could just go back and Yeah. yeah kind of do that. Which they did. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Mantis. Mantis talking himself through rescuing the or saving the day. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I can do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, dog. <no. laughs> so um, um yeah, it was seeing Lord Zod in action was pretty cool. I liked it. It was, yeah, yeah. I really, I really, I really liked seeing him in action. I liked, um, I liked the tie in to last week's episode because we really didn't know that was going on in the background last yeah. week, and to kind of find out like they were there just manipulating the whole scene in the background, just doing a bank heist while yeah, <laughs> everyone's looking heist. over here. <laughs> so it was a really cool episode. Um, that really, like I said, just. Tied into last week's episode very well. Yeah. Um, we got a lot of answers we didn't even know we had the questions yeah. for. <laughs> yeah, like I, wrote, cause I keep looking now because I wrote down these notes. So um, he steals an eyeball, which I don't know. I assume it's something, but it wasn't something I caught what it was. Like when they first get there, he looks at an eyeball. Okay. He's like, this is interesting. And then he saves it. And they kind of st- they spent like an extra second or two like being like, hey, this is an eyeball he's taken. So I don't know if it's going to lead to okay. something. The only eyeball related thing I would think of is either Starro or Despero, but I you never know. know. Yeah, <laughs> you never um, know. Uh, that's interesting. There was a I funny, didn't catch that. yeah, a standout. I guess kind of related to Rocket, uh, a standout mm. moment that happened in the earlier was when Bear shows up, and uh, he's like, "Hey, you know, I wanted to say hi to you know um, Rocket and Forager." And, you know, Jay was there and everything he had that funny joke about, you know, don't hug me. I'm 102 years old. He's like, I'm 16,000 or whatever. Oh, that scene had me die, <laughs> but, especially on Ryan. He was just like, speaking of wasted time. Yeah. <laughs> but I, that scene was kind of heartwarming to me because, you know, they were, mm. this is when they're sort of alluding to Forager leaving. And mm-hmm. Bear mentioned something about, you know, <laughs> the bugs kind of move accelerated pace. And it was yeah. heartwarming to me, not because of the bug. But when um, when Bear and when Jay Garrick were kind of swapping stories about how they got the you know their partners with people they love, I don't know. It's just yeah. whenever people talk about how they got the person that they love to love them, it's always kind of heartwarming to listen to. And it was just a nice yeah. knowing that obviously a, Jay's a hundred two years old. You know, Joan passed away yeah. a while ago and stuff. And yeah, it was it was definitely a heartwarming scene, especially in that same scene. They were kind of all. Uh, remembering Superboy at a point yeah. as well, mm. um, and then the whole scene was just ended by Kilowog yeah. peeing in his suit. Yeah, I know that. So. I, I know. I wrote my literally my note says Kilowog. Did he piss or shit? That's what I wrote. <laughs> Honestly, we don't know. It was just waste management, dog. <laughs> and Rocket was like, "Did he just?" Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but yeah. that's just speaking to Young Justice's uh, comedic timing, because yeah. like like you said, it was it was a very heartwarming and sentimental scene, mm-hmm. and they and Kilowog kind of pulls you back out of it, and just the episode just keeps rolling nonstop, yeah. and I, I I definitely enjoyed that that moment though to kind of. Uh, take a look at these characters and because they you know they've known each other for a long time mm-hmm. um but it's kind of good to see those conversations it's not just all about you know saving the world these characters are actual characters yeah. you know it's it's world building but also you know character building so it's good to see good to see that development yeah it was nice and the, the mm-hmm. only other thing i have noted from that scene like you mentioned of um it's, it's tamaray right uh, yeah, Tamari mentioned that he's the Green Lantern of, or he was the Green Lantern of the Krypton sector, and he kind of didn't mm-hmm. save him and stuff. And yeah, I also thought 
like you said already, Orion just being mad about the whole thing. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I love Orion. Though. Orion's a dude that's been. He's the, he's the dude that's like this could have been this meeting could have been an email, dude. He's like, just what the pissed fuck? off all the time. He's like, what are we doing? It's like I could literally be doing anything else right now. Yeah. Um. But um. I also about Tomare. Um. Before we move on to the next topic, um. I feel like headcanon. Um. Publish I feel like. Canon. <laughs> I feel like this is going to it kind of alluded to like this redemption arc for the character, yeah. you know, because we do get him on the flyer for the for this arc. So we know that he's going to have sort of a prominent role um, and the Green Lantern showed up late. Um, so they're kind of just getting into the, getting into it. But I feel like them making it a point to mention um he was the green lantern of krypton and that he has these regrets that crypt he couldn't save krypton while at the same time he's saying this uh like a, a rock throw away or whatever the saying is um lorzad is in uh metron's vault just like over there stealing everything yeah. to <laughs> bring back these evil crypto kryptonians yeah. i feel like Tomar, and especially it left open ended when Metron came back. Like, come with me if you want to save the galaxy. Yeah. Um, I feel like there's definitely going to be a Lorzad showdown, um, and he's got he's got the projector now, so Zod is probably on his way back as well. So I feel like Tomar Ray is going to be like, "Hey, I'm gonna put the paws on you." Yeah. Or fins. Is he a fish? I don't. He's know. A bird fish. <laughs> he's a birdfish. He's uh, a birdfish. So we'll see. But yeah. I, I did. I did enjoy that line and it did like censor put some censors yeah, off in the back of my head shot. like he's 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 about to he's about to go off yeah. and i'm ready for it yeah there was, <laughs> there was a lot of good setup in this episode mm -hmm. i like i when metron boom to back to that room i felt that i was like oh shit like yeah this, shit's gonna pop this is this is what this arc is leading up to this is like this is like the do or die moment yeah. <laughs> So that's a, that's all the stuff happening with Lorzad. Um, mm -hmm. I liked watching it. I think that that kind of that effect too of like the dimension shifting, and then yep. um, when they put Metron in that thing and he was like kind of shifting it was a cool little effect to be like like watching that. I kind of picture that in a comic book of like mm -hmm. a splash page of a character like Metron stuck like that, and you see like his dimensions kind of going back and forth. So that was cool. Um, the other thing happening, which I didn't realize this last episode. Until this episode, I was like, oh, we haven't gotten any Gar, like, in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. um, we got a lot of Gar in this episode. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I I saw a tweet, and I'm going to put it up on screen because I linked it to myself, where mm -hmm. there was parallels to the episode, I forgot the name, but back in season one, after they it, did the, um, the episode where they went into that training exercise. And season again, one. Yeah episode 17 disordered yeah and so they went into therapy with black canary and so we mm -hmm. kind of get parallels to that in this one with gar um what did you think about all that stuff i i enjoyed it um i did uh see what you linked as well and it did um i actually went back and watched a little bit of that episode oh, yeah. as well to yeah. kind of see those parallels in kind of live action and it was really kind of eye-opening because that is the first time that we actually you know see black canary in sort of this uh psychiatric role mm -hmm. um and you know the team had just dealt with like you said megan's uh they they were doing this training exercise that batman and martian manhunter put together and things went awry when uh artemis died mm -hmm. uh in the training exercise Great and episode. megan's <laughs> megan's mind kind of took over from there um and so this the season one episode 17 which we're talking about is the aftermath it's the next episode um where um they're kind of one by one having these sit downs with black canary um and you kind of see i think for me um sorry if you see <laughs> the sirens going off <laughs> Uh, but I think for me, that was kind of like the first episode where we really kind of peel back a layer on um, their mental state. And so for it to come kind of full circle um, and you you see Gar in the beginning, like feeding her these answers. Yeah, like, you could tell right away, is, too. She was you like, can not, tell, she was not buying that bullshit. <laughs> right. You could tell right away 
Gar was Gar was with the shits, and Black Canary was not. She's like, mm-hmm, okay. She's like, mm-hmm, okay, okay, okay. Right, let me give you a little check mark. Uh huh. Let's keep talking though. <laughs> and like, as soon as she brought brought up the sleeping pills, his whole demeanor unraveled, and um, you kind of get to the the meat of this that you know he's been dealing with it lost his whole life, like we've mentioned in a previous episode, um, and to just. It was a powerful moment um, when they kind of got to the root of it. Um, basically, he is trying to cope with the feeling of powerlessness. Um, and I think it's a feeling that a lot of us can kind of uh, relate to. Um, but I, I thought that scene um, or scenes uh, with Black Canary and, and Gar, they were well needed for Gar's arc because like, he's been this whole season, even before Superboard died, I was I was over his character, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. from the jump. So, um, it's, it's good to kind of see um, those walls starting to be broken down, and I think we're going to finally get to some sort of healing process. Yeah. But it was good to see that he took that step, because uh, Meg, the last time we saw him, Megan gave him that ultimatum. Um, so there is part of him that still wants to fight to be a part of the team, um, and fight to, you know, be the beast boy that we all are familiar with, but he's just got to find a way to get through these mental barriers that he's placed for himself. Yeah, I, I agree. I thought they handled it really well. I thought, like, it was, I thought the show also handled it, handled it well, where, like we said, when he came in, he was feeding her all these lines, and they made Black Canary, like, they portrayed her that she obviously didn't believe it, so that way you're not sitting there watching it like, why are you believing this? You know, like she right. knew that he's obviously just feeding her lines. And um, like he had a he had real breakthroughs in this this session. Like the mm. first breakthrough that he had was him like realizing that it wasn't just because it's your boy. It's all these losses. And then I thought Black Canary did a good job of her being like, well, how? Because he kept saying, I should have been there to stop this. I should have done that. And she's like, how? Like, what were you going to do? How? Like, yeah. and like really making him you know, see the problem for what it was. Mm -hmm. And then like, like you mentioned of, of him being like, you know, they're in this line of work, they're superheroes, you know, even if they don't have superpowers, they're all superheroes, but they have these moments where they feel powerless. And mm -hmm. so it's relatable for us, obviously, you know, because we, there are moments like that, but it only makes you, and of course these are all fictional characters, but it makes you think of if you were a superhero and something happens or something like that, like how much more powerless can you like, that's got to be crazy big, you know, to feel yeah. that, especially for a teenager like him. And he's been around this since he was like eight. Mm -hmm. I, and then that, he has that breakthrough where he's like, I need help. Like, yeah. obviously, you know, Black Canary is there to help them, like to start these conversations. But they, they'll eventually, I'm assuming, lead to like more professional mm -hmm. kind of situations. Not that she's not, but yeah. I, I, he had a good breakthrough in this episode. I'm like, all right, cool. Oh, yeah. Now let's move forward with Beast Boy and not have him be in his room you know, the last <laughs> season exactly. and a half and doing all that stuff, so. <laughs> yes, because, you know, the the first step is always admitting that, you know, you need help. Mm -hmm. So it was really good to see them portray that in a, in a positive light that, you know, asking for help or recognizing that you need help is not something that you should be shying away from because you you can get into this habit of, like, just trying to push it all down, and it will eventually just implode so um we saw that earlier in his arc where you know he broke up with his girlfriend um he he quit his tv show he quit the team so you know he was in this downward spiral and i think that i think that they are handling this in a very real way mm -hmm. um and it's just spectacular to see kind of play out um and then hopefully you know it lead it does lead to a redemption arc down the line um, keep watching Young Justice season five still has not been confirmed. Um, I hope, I <laughs> but <hope> so. <laughs> I also uh, wanted to quickly shout out that I did um, like the line where there it's him and Black Canary talking, and at one point he's just like, um, "Connor's hanging with Wally now," and I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. "If only you knew." <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I saw, yeah, that was a good line. Uh, yeah. So it yeah, was. We'll um, see. Yeah, I think. Uh, you know, obviously, like I said, these are fictional characters. These are comic book related things. But I think it's important to have this kind of stuff and all the other stuff they've tackled this season 
because it makes mm. it easier for people to not only relate to, relate to it in their real life, but to do something about it or feel like, okay, maybe I'm ready to take this on. Because if they were to see this kind of situation, like in a documentary, maybe people will kind of just, it'll bring them down even more. But consuming yeah. it in this kind of way, like I said, there's a lot of young people that watch this show. So maybe they're also going through something similar and they see something like this. And yes, of course, we know these are fictional characters. It's animated. It's a show. But then... These are fake? <laughs> yeah, they're not real. Don't forget. Spoiler alert for everyone out there. Spoilers. Like, okay. Spoilers. <laughs> but like, if it's someone who's going through something similar and they see something like this where it's like, okay, obviously I know this isn't real, but this is a character that I... This is a character that I like. You know, maybe they're a Beast Boy fan and they're going through similar issues and they can make a breakthrough. Then they say, okay, maybe it's something I can do for myself. So I think... We've talked about this before. I think that's just the power of not only fictional media, but, but comic books specifically. Comic books have been around for over almost 100 years at this point, and there's been a lot of different issues that they tackled and stuff to make it you know, easier for people to go through real life. So I'm glad we got a breakthrough with, with Gar, and that was his, all his scenes were in that, that office with Black Canary. That was kind of it. But um, mm -hmm. The last, uh, the other B plot of this was everything but Superboy. Speaking of Superboy yeah. and Wally hanging out, um, quick shout out to uh, Maestro General Zod and his choir, <laughs> making, <laughs> making a oh. banger. <laughs> oh. I, I really do. I don't know. I really do like that they are portraying Zod's followers in this light. I, it's it's it's, it's a, a way cult. that we have. It's a cult, yeah. like. It's a way we haven't really seen them portrayed in that light, you know, before, you know, they've always been warriors, you know, yeah. um, but it's, it's never been the sing songy yeah. Zod is God <laughs> uh, kind of warriors. So like it will, it threw me for a loop for a second, but it was entertaining well, to you see think about like the song itself. You, you know, <laughs> They're in the Phantom Zone, though. Guy. There's been they some gotta, better cult songs out there, you know. <laughs> they, they gotta, they gotta, you know, they gotta pass the time somehow. <laughs> <laughs> well, why not? Why not? Why not sing about, you know, Zod? I don't yeah. know. It was, uh, like it I said, it was kind of jarring at first, but like it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, um, so yeah, when when Zod pulls up. Or he bring you know they're flying around and he finally brings Superboy to his like hideout area, and mm. uh, when they land, Zod was like, "Hey, you know this is our new guest, Superboy." And before it's revealed that Zod is playing Superboy, I was like, "Well, obviously we know Zod is Zod, so obviously he's up to something." Obviously. But at when a couple episodes ago, when he first got introduced, I was like, "Oh, maybe Zod doesn't know this is Superboy because he didn't tell mm. him his name yet." But by this point, he's like, "Okay, he knows." Mm -hmm. And so when Zod goes, oh, this is our new friend Superboy, I was like, Zod's lying. Like he, yeah, he knows. No. He's got it. Obviously, he reveals it to um, his wife. He's like, hey, we're slow playing mm -hmm. this one. Like it's yeah, you know, <laughs> he's a smooth character. I'll, yeah. I'll give him that. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely like the betrayal of Zod. Um, kind of, and it's, it brings up the question: who's playing who at this point? Because yeah. right before. Um, you know, Superboy does nil uh, before Zod. Right before that, you kind of see him getting his me memories back. Yeah, you don't really know if all of his memories are back, but I feel like at this point, if we're seeing him kissing Megan in his mind, all of his memories are back. Yeah, um, especially since the kiss took place um, on Mars, which is you know right before he, he got died. pushed out into the Phantom Zone. Mm. So I feel like he does have all of his memories back, and I feel like. So if we have not seen him interact with Zod in the series that I'm that I'm remembering, but I feel like Superman has to have mentioned who Zod is. So I feel like Superboy is kind of like, yeah, I'll kneel for you, dude. Whatever, <laughs> just yeah. wait till we get out of here, dog. That was, um, so <laughs> go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say that was a question I had for myself. I have bad memory when it comes mm. to this. Does this? I know this is only an episode or two ago. Mm -hmm. Does this version of Zod? Or is this version of Zod? Was he on? Like, do, based on my question, is does Superman know about this Zod? If, because we were like, oh yeah, Superman has to know about the Phantom Zone. But then I'm like, well, yeah. does he? Because Metron has a projector, and I tried to remember, and I should have went back to watch. 
when Lorzod was telling that story, I was like, does Superman know about Zod? So I could be wrong. He, they could know. They could have mentioned it already. I just don't remember. But that's something yeah. I had to remind myself of, like, because I had that same question as you. I was like, well, obviously Superman must have told Superboy about Zod at this point. So mm-hmm. I would, huh? I would guess that he has, and I, I'm just misremembering. And Superman does know about this, our General Zod. Um, mm-hmm. So I would assume. I, I feel like he has too, but I also can't recall. Yeah, I have to go <laughs> so I um, mean. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> one, one quick shout out. You mentioned the a portrayal of Zod. This mm-hmm. was just a quick note I put down. Why do they make Zod all caked up in this episode? They, I mean, I ain't mad at it, you know? <laughs> I was like, okay, Zod, I see you. But that was funny. But um, <laughs> no, there was also that part where uh, we've, been, we've been joking about it. But then, you know, Superboy drops off Phantom Girl and then she's like, yeah, when you're in the Phantom Zone, you kind of just you're just there. So if she came in unconscious. She's probably gonna stay. In Bro, when she said that, I was like, oh my god, so, poor Phantom Girl. Shout out to Phantom Girl. She's just gonna be there, but um, she's just gonna be in a coma until the foreseeable future, I guess. Yeah. So, I would assume that now that Mantis has the Phantom Zone projector, mm-hmm. and we're going into the last episode of this arc, what well, we assume is the last episode of the arc. Is um, this four or five? That's what I'm saying. We assume it's four. We don't okay. know. Okay. Um, I think I heard it will be five, but I could be wrong. Maybe. It might be. Mm-hmm. Um, but if it is four, then it, obviously they'll break them out next episode. There'll be a big fight. Mm-hmm. And, Either um, way, I, I feel like we are going to see something next week. Yeah, for sure. It's <laughs> and, and like Young Justice, this, we said this last week, ever since they've come back from break, like these episodes have all been bangers. Like every single mm-hmm. one have been so fucking good. I loved yeah. last week's episode, and shout out to you guys. You guys loved it too. We we got our first 250 view episode, yeah, or video <laughs> big pod, um, big pod. But I've been I've been loving this second half of the season. First half of the yeah. season, I was like, all right, you know, this is still fun. But this second half has been came back with Aqualad or Aquaman, mm-hmm. and then now all this with Rocket is just it's been good. So yeah, and then we finish off the episode with. I know for a fact is was E's favorite part. In the post credits, we have Forager doing Shakespeare. Fucking Romeo and Juliet, dog. Romeo <laughs> and Juliet. I was. I turned it off. I'm not gonna lie. To you. <laughs> as soon as I heard him talking and I heard what was happening, I turned it off. I was like, the episode's over. I, I was like, Shakespeare is Romeo and Juliet's already one thing, but to add Forager speaking into it, it was. Because I already knew where it was headed. <laughs> And correct me if I'm wrong. Did he end up like going and forages, forages love is yeah. forages. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't want that. <laughs> I did I did I did not want that. Uh, yeah, but that was episode hurt. 20. I loved it. I uh <laughs> I knew I was gonna love this art because of new gods, and then when mm-hmm. now we have all this stuff tied in the whole season with Zod, it's just it's been great. And yeah, yeah. I do I I have appreciated everything kind of tying back to the first arc um and i've also enjoyed like learning new things about these existing characters and kind of you know the new gods are still trying to uh get halo and um that's true yeah they want to get halo and cyborg cyborg yeah um and so it was it's still interesting to hear these things you know there's a lot of diplomacy going on in the background Mm -hmm. that they don't necessarily hit on each season um but you know, it's it's really good when a show, like, no matter what the scene, there's always little hints of dialogue to other things going on, and it all, it's all connected. I so, say, like... You know, it, feels like <laughs> it feels like an actual living DC universe that con- is it all does. connected. It, it does, and I, I am enjoying the heck out of it. Mm-hmm. I really hope it does come back for season five. God, I hope so. Um, this episode, like I said, was another... Uh, phenomenal installment um, that picked up really well after last week's episode, especially with the um, intermingled storyline um, about Lorzad just kind of in the background of last week's episode. Yeah, and we had it no would go idea. to like one day before and two days before and like present day and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I really enjoyed this episode. I can't wait to see what next week's uh, episode has in store for us. Yeah. So that was episode 20. Um, also don't forget for the finale. So God, six weeks from now, fuck. (laughs) 
six weeks from now, we're going to be doing a live raw emotional reaction to the finale. Um, yes. But thank you guys for supporting this. We love this show. We love watching this show. We love talking mm-hmm. about this show. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Anything else you want to mention about this? Quick shout outs for this episode. Uh, no, nah, shout out to Kilowog Suit, dog. <laughs> was he pissing? Was he shitting? Who knows? Who knows? Let us know in the comments down below. <laughs> you let us know your opinion. <laughs> oh, I will say this. Uh, I do think we met, you know, we mentioned Rocket's kind of taking a back seat. I think if mm. this leads up to a big fight of them re- releasing the Phantom Zone and there, if there's like a fight on Supertown, I think Rocket's going to have a big kind of. I think she'll have a bigger part in her fight than than mm. Zatanna did in her fight. You know what I mean? Because eh, I could see it uh, because she is kind of leading this summit. Um, you know, every time they we do get uh, become flies on the wall of this this summit, she is kind of leading the conversation. Yeah. Um, and there's also and being five the other magic users with her. You know that are <laughs> also true. So so we'll see. Uh, I'm interested to to see more of the character. I know that. I know that they're going to focus more on the character because, you know, they did leave kind of inklings about, you know, um, her son and also her dealing with Orion here um, on here as well. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you can kind of see the parallels between those two storylines. So I do feel like we are going to get more of Rocket. Um, It's just, you know, how much more with there only being one, maybe two episodes left uh, in her arc. Do you think Razor will come up, come back like in the season finale in a big fight kind of thing? Or do you think I, that's think the last we saw of him? I think that's the last we saw of him. I think, um, as much as I don't want to admit it, I think that was kind of like a, a farewell to that Green Lantern animated uh, series. If we do get more of those characters, because, you know, he is still out on the hunt for... Uh, uh, <laughs> so if, I learned if a lot we do about get... Razor after last week. The fans were... <laughs> Yo, look, it's a great character. He had a great arc, even mm-hmm. though it was just one season. So, yeah. um, and you know, he still hasn't shown up in the comics. So, um, maybe he will. I do hope we get to see more of him. Maybe we'll see more of him in speaking of the comics, the Young Justice comics coming up. Maybe we'll see more of him there. Yep. Who knows? Um, probably not since it's between seasons, but who knows? Yeah. <laughs> After our last recording, we did find out that. And a couple mm. of you, a couple of you, let us know in the comments, which we appreciate. We love the comics you guys have been leaving; it's been great. Uh, that the writer of the show confirmed that the Green Lantern show was adjacent, canon adjacent to this show, mm. um, whatever that means in canon talk. So <laughs> maybe they'll announce a Green Lantern HBO Max animated show, and we'll see that in ten years. We'll see. I mean, they also already announced a Green Lantern HBO Max. <laughs> that's a live action show. Live that, action you know, show. That's only not going to be how and John's going to be the other six. And... and Yeah, and then there was the Green Lantern Corps movie that was part of the whole uh, DC uni- Extended Universe project. Um, if you want to hear more about our thoughts on all this process, <laughs> check out our there's... recent video of the Cool Comics show, episode four. Um, we talked about all DC Comics news, some Marvel news, even some, uh, you know, non big two like umbrella academy mm. and invincible news on there make sure you check out that episode but you know what we didn't talk about damien the wonder woman video game come <laughs> you know being a wonder woman fan the last couple years there's been a lot of hits and misses shout out to her 80th though <laughs> we we were riding a high after episode or episode the first movie right True. we're like fuck yeah wonder woman 84 gets announced we're like fuck yeah it gets delayed we're like fuck gets delayed again we're like fuck come to hbo max bet and then, and then it, it came out, out. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> wonder woman's 80th anniversary came and then it went <laughs> so we just had this game. Riddle, me this. riddle me this i still have that video that's gonna come out i i think what i'm gonna do for the next dc fandom i'm gonna put that mm. video out that week so we like <laughs> this is what last year was bad um, bad bad but that was episode 20 um, of Young Justice. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for supporting. If you guys yeah, haven't I already... Have a, oh, go ahead. A little community question. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to see what other, everyone else's opinion was. Do you think Connor is going to be loyal to Zod, or is he playing him? Ooh, let us know. That's a good question. Yeah, let us know. I let think, us know. What do I think of I think... I would assume he's playing him. Maybe mm. that's my faith in Superboy. Maybe he is brainwashed, but I would think... 
I also think, but you know, the show has thrown us for a loop before, so who knows? <laughs> we have gone a lot of evil Superman lately, so maybe it's time for evil Superboy. True, and we did see his anger come back when he first got into the Phantom Zone, but I feel like even if he is brainwashed, you know, Megan's gonna swoop in and be like, "Hey, get your mind right." Yeah. Like, hey, hey, baby, where you being? At? <laughs> Just... <laughs> well, let Sorry, us know what you see. think. Is Superboy loyal to Zod, or is he playing him? He did kneel. Yeah. Let us know. Let us know. But that'll be episode 20. Check us out next week for episode 21, maybe the final arc. Uh, make sure you guys also check out our new Twitter channel, Twitter page for this channel. He is in uh, charge of uh, handling that, taking care of everything, sharing some cool articles. Um, a lot of news came out last couple of days. Some cancellations yeah. in CW and stuff we talk about on there. So yeah. Check it out. <laughs> also check out our own Twitters. Like and subscribe. Again, for the finale, we're going to be doing a live reaction if you haven't been here before, we sit here and watch the episode. I'll obviously cut it down for copyright. And uh, maybe we'll piss and fart in our own pants if something happens crazy. Yeah, I got my Green, green Lantern suit in the closet. <laughs> <yeah>. oh. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.